Hi, everyone. Welcome to the question and answer session for the call to artists for the basketball courts at Malcolm X Park. As a reminder, we are recording this session. We have interpretation available in Spanish, Mandarin, Cantonese, and closed captioning. You can access interpretation by clicking the globe icon in your meeting controls toolbar and then selecting the language you'd like to hear. To access the captioning, you click the CC icon in your toolbar. We're gonna pause for a minute so that the interpreters can invite people to join them on their channels. Let's start with Cantonese, then Mandarin, and then Spanish. 大家好,我們今天的會議是有同傳的這個功能的。如果你們想用廣東話聽今天的會議,你可以在正間開始開啟個翻譯的功能,那時你會看到一個地球儀,這麼這麼簡約語就可以了。大家好,我是您的普通话翻译,那么一会儿他们打开了语言翻译选项之后,请你点击我的普通话的翻译的频道,那么如果您是用手机或者是用iPad的平板上线的话,请你点击你的右下角的三个点,点开之后选择语言选
This is a good opportunity for artists and teams with experience in large scale painting and who can collaborate with other artists and the community. The first content page contains the basic information about both the call to artists and for the project itself, like the budget, eligibility, and the location. An outline of the call to artist schedule is here for reference, including the date and times of this session. The day we'll be posting answers to questions, which is next Wednesday, April 20th, and the day the call closes, which is Friday, April 29th at 5 p.m. Eastern. While we accept applications right up to the deadline, I strongly encourage any artists who are applying to complete their submission well before the deadline as submittable can get overwhelmed by a large number of submissions at the same time. And we cannot accept any applications once the call closes. So by five, by five o'clock, um, if your submission is not in, unfortunately, you will not be able to enter anything, even if it's 501. So I've had to learn that mistake the hard way. So I encourage you to get it in as early as possible. Uh, this is a call. This call is open to all artists and artist teams. We have no geographic limitation for this call, but there is a strong preference for artists who have a connection to the Roxbury neighborhood and or the theme of the project. Page three contains information about the area that the park is in, which is the Roxbury neighborhood of Boston. We include this information because our commissions are site specific. And while we don't expect anyone to be experts in the area, it's helpful for artists to give some thought to the site context, the surrounding community and the people who are involved with the project. Roxbury is the geographic heart of Boston enclosing the center point of the city and located within the traditional homeland of the Massachusetts people. The Washington Park Urban Renewal Program begun in 1963 and doubled the size of the historic Washington Park, which is now named Malcolm X Park. Pages four and five contain information about the Malcolm X Park renovation project being done by the uh, Department of Parks and Recreation. The project will focus on better connectivity between existing uses, upgrading the amenities, and creating a more inviting and refreshed facility. Among the planned improvements include play areas for ages two to five and five to 12, water play, amphitheater space, four basketball courts, and more. This project is the city's first equitable procurement project and has included many community meetings. Construction broke ground and began in March of 2022 and will take approximately one year to complete. It's also important to note that adjacent to the park is the Malcolm X Ella Little Collins House. This historic house located on 72 Dale Street was built in 1874 and was for many years home to Ella Little Collins, a prominent local civil rights activist and her younger brother Malcolm X during his later teenage years. Malcolm X would become a major leader in the civil rights movement and Nation of Islam. For the rest of his life, he made frequent visits to his sister's Dale Street home. The home, the house has remained within the family since its purchase in 1941. In 1998, the Malcolm X Ella Little Collins house was designated a city landmark by the Boston Landmarks Commission and in 2021 was listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Pages six and seven provide the technical parameters for the long-term artwork, some survey, community survey results and usage of the space. This opportunity is for the large scale design and installation of a 2D floor mural on Bosco on basketball courts. Renderings and plans of the site are shared on page six of the call and an image of the current court and the retaining walls can be seen on page seven. 
Through the survey response, we found that the basketball courts are the most desired amenity in the park. And through this call to artists, we are seeking artists and or artist teams that will capture the essence of Roxbury, its lively community, Malcolm X Park, and the legacy of its namesake. Artists and artist teams will be asked to work together and with the community in the design and development of the court murals. Please note that the drawings are for reference only and all dimensions and locations will be confirmed by the selected artist. Page eight shown on the left here outlines the commissioning process. We are currently in step two. The call is open and we are answering questions today uh, during this session and later this evening at 6 p.m. Once the call closes, step three begins when we convene an artist review working group to review our artist submissions and select the finalist. The finalists may be asked to interview virtually and then the working group will recommend an artist to the Boston Art Commission, also known as the BAC. The BAC will review and vote on that recommendation. And if approved, we will contract with the artist for that project. Page nine shown on the right details the overall schedule for this commission. This particular commission is slated to be installed by spring of 2023. The next two pages detail what materials you will need to apply to this commission. These details are also included in the submittable application that we'll review in a moment. But we hope artists can use this list to gather their materials before they begin their submittable application. As typical for our call to artists, we ask for an artist description, which can be a resume, a biography, or other summary of the artist's professional experience. Artists who are applying as a team should clearly identify a team leader and each member of the team. We'll be asking for 10 images of completed projects and an annotated image list providing information about those work samples. For artist teams, please identify the images that show each team member's work. For images containing collaborative works, please be deliberate about which part of the artwork belongs to who. We'll also be asking for a statement of interest and initial project concept. We do not ask for any design work or visual proposals at this stage, but instead want applicants to provide a written description of their possible approach or concept for the commission given the information provided in this call. Please note that including drawings or designs made specifically for this application or the site will lead to disqualification. We also ask artists to submit a narrative diversity and inclusion plan. The city of Boston is committed to ensuring that vendors who work with the city's behalf, on the city's behalf, utilize procurement processes that are fully open to the inclusion of small and local businesses, including small local business enterprises, minority business enterprises, women business enterprises, and veteran owned small business enterprises. In this section, we are asking you to describe the efforts you have taken or will take to ensure that your selection of subcontractors and suppliers for this contract will meaningfully will be meaningfully open to these companies. We will also need an itemized budget and we provide a sample budget template that you can use in the appendices. On page 12, we list the criteria that the artist review working group will use when reviewing applications. The core criteria is the curatorial vision for the city of Boston. The curatorial vision for the city of Boston is to foster the creation and collection of artworks that reflect the people, ideas, histories, and future of Boston, the traditional homeland of the Massachusetts people, and the home of the neighboring Wampanoag and Nipmuc peoples. 
We aim to commission and approve artworks that engage communities and directly respond to, enrich, and enliven the urban environment. We seek public art that is driven by an artistically strong vision, enhances the diversity and equity of the existing collection, and possesses durability appropriate to the lifespan of the work. We're also looking for artists, again, with a strong artistic vision and will give preference to artists who show a connection to the theme and or to the area, whether through their artwork or their experience. On the following page that you'll see on the right, uh, that provides more information about the Boston Art Commission and the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture and offers links to websites and other project related websites. I'll now pass it over to Sarah, who will be giving you a brief overview of the submittable platform. Thank you, Liza. Um, artists have to use the submittable platform online to apply to this call. This is the top of the landing screen that you'll see on submittable. I'm going to navigate to the application itself now so that we can walk through it together quickly and we can share the link in the chat as well if you'd like to open it on your own. And I say quickly, but I think I need to back out of something. All right, can everyone see the application? Great. So this is the submittable application. Um, Liza went over quite a bit of our requirements here just a moment ago in talking through the call. At the top, you'll see some of the information. You can link to the call here. It gives the basics of the commission, um, which were also reviewed in the PDF. As you scroll down, um, you'll see some more of that background information. The first things we ask for, of course, are your name, uh, website, contact information, social media, if you'd like to share that with us. Uh, and then we move into demographic information. Our review panels will be looking at the content of your application, uh, but it's important to our office's goals of equity and inclusion to reach all Bostonians. So we asked for this information to know who we're reaching. Um, artists should note that the reviewers will have access to it. So if they don't feel comfortable uh, with the reviewers knowing particular information, you can always choose, I prefer not to answer. So these questions ask your age, your race and ethnicity, uh, sexual orientation, if you identify as a person with disabilities, um, your native language, and then we get into the call documents. So the first requirement is the artist statement of interest, which Liza spoke to before. This is the narrative um, describing an initial artistic concept for this site, why you're interested in the opportunity, what connection you have to the site or neighborhood, or any specific or unique processes you might use. Second, we ask you to upload files um, of your artist description. You can attach up to five files, which is helpful for teams in particular. Um, this is your bio, resume, CV, other documents describing your background and experience. The next option um, for uploading files is relevant work samples. This is, you're allowed to attach 10 files. We accept JPEGs, TIFFs, um, short video files. And again, we ask that artists do not include any drawings or designs made specifically for this site or application as that would lead to disqualification. The next files to upload is an annotated image list, which relates to your relevant work samples. Um, we ask for a title, media dimensions, location, um, year, and a brief description of the projects you're sharing in your work samples here including your role in the project, whether you were the lead artist, community organizer, and assistant. Um, you can include other information that you think might be relevant or helpful. And finally, an itemized budget, not finally, but that's the final upload, is the itemized budget. 
Um, as Liza mentioned, there is a template in the call um, in the appendices. And finally, the diversity and inclusion plan, um, which again is a narrative of 500 words where we're asking you to talk about um, efforts you have taken or efforts you will be taking to ensure that your selection of any subcontractors and suppliers for this contract will be meaningfully open to small local business enterprises, minority business enterprises, women business enterprises, and or veteran owned small business enterprises. And I am now going to, that's the entire application. I'm going to switch back to the other presentation and hand it back over to Karen and Liza. So now we are in our question and answer segment. Um, and I would uh, implore you to uh, place any of your questions in the Q&A box um, in the tools below. Um, not the chat function, but in the Q&A. And if you'd like to speak your question into the space, you can also raise your hand and Amber will help us facilitate um, anyone who would like to speak their question into the space. So we do have one question in the chat box now. I mean, I'm sorry, in the Q&A box now. Um, and it says, I'm a photographer who has done large photo murals. Will the committee accept proposals that are not paint-based as in are in large photo mural form? So this uh, call is specific to a painted mural installation. And so if you are a photographer with a photo mural, you can certainly submit an application, but the expectation would be that the application includes a plan for your team who will be painting it and what your plan is for executing the, um, the painted portion of that mural. It looks like we have another question in the chat asking, could we provide some insight on what we're looking for in the diversity inclusivity plan? Karen, you wanna take that one? Sure, we'd love, especially with a project like this in which you'll be working with a team, uh, we'd love to know um, what your diversity and inclusion plan is for pulling in other um, colleagues who to work with you or subcontractors. So you can just talk that out. Um, you can just tell us what your approach will be. Any additional questions? We have a question um, asking how many artists typically apply to a call? I think uh, it ranges from 30 to 100. Um, so it, it depends on uh, obviously interest. I mean, we've gotten more than that. Um, as well. Uh, it depends on how many people are interested and how many people feel like they're qualified. Um, but it's usually there's usually some competition. Um, but we encourage you to apply, even if you think you might not be qualified, we still ask you to, um, to share your portfolio, tell us why you're interested in what you want to do. Um, and we are you know, really, really excited about reaching artists that we haven't worked with before. So, you know, please, if, if you're second guessing yourself, please work on an application. If you have um, other questions, you can write in some questions to us um, and we would, you know, love to hear from you. We have a question from Nicole Marvelous. Is there a targeted completion date for this project? The targeted completion, um, timeline would be sometime around spring of 2023. 
Another question from Michaela Binter is what have the engagement sessions for this project look like? Attendance, activities, feedback styles, et cetera. So in the development of this call, the engagement sessions have included um, virtual uh, meetings with community members. Um, engagement for the development of the mural itself would really be up to the artist team. And that is sort of what we're looking for to hear from you in this application to have an understanding of how you would incorporate engagement with the community in the development of your themes. Another question from Jack O'Hearn is, can you discuss any material requirements? When I research paint for courts, there seem to be more coating than just a paint coat, such as resurfacer or cushion coating. Is it required that the artist provide those additional coatings? Also, is there a brand or type of paint coating that is required? We don't have any specific recommendations for a brand of paint coating. Um, but the budget has been set so that it would be fully inclusive of all of the materials and different coatings that you would need. Are there any additional questions? And in the chat, we have another question about where we will post the videos and the answers. So we will be taking uh, written questions up through, I believe, look at my notes again. So we will be taking questions um, and all, uh, all posted answers to the questions, which will be Wednesday, April 20th will be posted uh, onto the Arts in Boston website. And we can put that link in the chat as well. Another question from Nicole Marvelous is if people wanted to submit more questions beyond this gathering, how could they do that? So there's a link on the submittable as well as the PDF of this application. Um, where you can submit uh, questions into a form. You can also uh, submit your questions to Sarah Rodrigo. Uh, her email can be placed in the chat as well. Somebody can throw that in there. And do, do, do. Okay, so our content, our, de our deadline for content specific questions is this Friday, April 15th. Um, and again, all the answers to those questions will be posted on the 20th. Just a follow-up question uh, from Jack O'Hearn regarding the coatings. So there are no requirements for additional coatings to the paint coating. That's entirely up to the artist.
I, I'm just going to jump in. I wouldn't say that's up to the artist. We would expect the artist to work with the Department of Parks and Recreation on appropriate materials. We don't have specific recommendations for brands um, at this time, but we do expect the artwork to last, uh, to have a good duration. Um, and to, to use, we expect the artist to use appropriate materials for the courts. Liza, is there anything you'd add to that? No, that's exactly right. Um, you know, this is long-term works. And so the um, expectation of what we would be looking for in the application as well is an understanding of what that process would be um, in ensuring that there is going to be long lasting durability in your painting process, whether that's through, you know, X amount of coats that you'll lay down um, and how you would execute the design. We have a comment from Maria Multani saying, curious if we're, if you're aware that it's difficult to execute a painted ground mural in the spring due to weather and groundwater, et cetera. It seems like it would be beneficial to work with someone like herself who has experience in the field and can help plan to support artists and the community for the best final outcome. This field is very different than wall mural work and is a larger challenge to execute than many artists and administrators might know. If anybody would like to respond. I think that all sounds great. Um, the this call is open to all artists and artist teams, and so you know we would certainly invite and encourage anybody with an extended amount of experience in doing this work to apply. Just a comment from Nicole Marvelous. Thanks for answering questions. What, what an awesome opportunity. You're welcome, Nicole. We hope you apply and look forward to your application. Okay, hey, so we'll give it another minute. If we don't get another question, we can um, close up here. I think we have uh, we have another one of these this this evening. If you want to, if you think of a question you want to ask and you want to join us again, uh, please do. We're at six o'clock tonight, right? So uh, if you want to do this all again, you'll 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 see us all there. Um, or you could send us your written questions.